And we'll continue with our Kelly Blue Book coverage of the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. And we're in the Maserati stand with Jim Selwa, who is president of Maserati North America. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank As you we for talked having to, me here today. Happy to have you. As we talked a little bit off camera, you delivered what I think is one of the most interesting speeches I have ever heard from an executive at an auto show. And let's talk a little bit about the ultra luxury market. We're entering into a, a year that many are thinking might be recession plagued. Uh, down in terms of overall market. You're very positive, aren't you? Yeah, we're very positive about it. I mean, most certainly, if you look at what's happened in the market as we're discussing off camera here, all of our, our competitors are down significantly, and there's a reason for that. The strategy, as we were saying, most people, whether you know we're saying it's a BMW or a Mercedes-Benz or an Audi, they like to pace their customer from a three to a five to a seven to a phantom or however it goes. They move we, them along. We up move the them chain. along. Yeah. And with our companies, whether it's Ferrari or ourselves, we had to start with a strategy that said, well, how are we going to get this done? So we looked at what the super wealthy market looked like. We took a good lesson out of the playbook, obviously, of Ferrari, who helped bring Maserati into this country. Right. We're still with 36 of our 54 dealers are Ferrari dealers. So we've broken apart. We stand alone. We grow on our own and now we grow at a different pace than they do. So nobody would have ever believe we would sell this amount of cars here. And we have a controlled environment, much like our, our brothers next door here at, at uh, Ferrari. At 7,300 cars a year, we're at full capacity. We might be able to expand to reach 9,000 cars or so, but once you get a little too far, the trick is always to be one car short. Yeah. Balance, and, demand, and supply, and the supply one absolutely. car short of and demand. And when I talk about the luxury market and the exclusivity, as soon as you fall out of exclusivity, you're done. And so when I looked at that and I've had all the same questions being here in Detroit, my family's been here since 1911, I hear the doom and gloom, and okay, that's fine, but how are you going to get out of it? I mean, you, you have to think very positively about how you're going to grow your business. You can't just say, well, I guess I'm going to go backwards now. Uh, you have to give it a try. So. We have had a strategy for the last three years that uh, we have put in place that really looks at how do you carve out that super wealthy market. That small percentage of people who control 50% of the wealth here in America. And it is a very small a very niche. small segment. Yes. You, you don't have an endless supply. That's why you see when you know the times get a little tough, whether you know it's our colleagues here at Bentley who every time they introduce a new product, they go up. But you look at the Flying Spur, they pull the production back product volume goes down, 7 Series, S-Class, the S-Class is only two years old, that car has not had as strong sales as it did the year before. Right. This car is going on its fourth year and had a 56% increase. It's because we spent a lot of time with our customers saying, what would you like now? Now, now that the cars have been sporty, this car appeals to the luxury market in terms of a different person. Right. It appeals to an executive. I get in this car, we have you know a wireless keyboard. You can put your SIM card in from your phone and you can do your email on the way to work. So there's a lot of guys that like that. But what's a lot of guys? You'd say, well, how many is that? That's only a hundred. So right. if I produce Which is two, enough for you, but not necessarily exactly enough for, for Mercedes-Benz. Absolutely right, correct. Right. So you've got to be very careful to say, wow, that's really good and we got a lot of guys. And I always say to my team, what's a lot of guys? Is that 25 or right. 2,500? Right. So, you know, we, we always try to be very careful about that. But uh, it's the same thing with the GT to try to get this car absolutely right. This car now has a four month waiting list, so we're on the right track. And, and that's how we have grown, is to just really spend a lot of time with our customers. And, and our customer is a guy who looks at that and will say, and we had a great event here last night at, at the Auto Show, where the Auto Show brought in 450 very qualified people through American Express to look. You guys just walk up and buy cars. They liked it, said, well, that's great, I'll have one of those. And, but they were all super wealthy people. So how that, do you, that's the kind of thing we look at. How do you get across to, to the super wealthy that you're the car for them without blatantly looking like you're just trying you, to exploit don't. that market? Or you no, don't? Or don't. they're you okay know, with that? We, you know, luckily I think it's, um, you might say it's Italy's day in the sun for design. Mm -hmm. And also it's a wonderful country yeah. to go well, visit. Well, it's certainly been that way for 60 years at least. And in terms so of when you design. go there, we have so many people who love to just come through and see our factories. If you go to Ferrari, for instance, it's like going to Mecca in the car world. Yeah. And the same thing. I've done all it, it cars, absolutely is. Absolutely and is. the same thing with our drivetrains in our car are all Ferrari engineered. So people are smart, first of all. 
They usually know more about the product than most of the guys that work for me. They'll come in here, they know these cars inside out and backwards, so you don't fool anybody. It's not like you gotta sit here and say, well, yeah, it's zero to 60 and it's 400 horsepower and it goes 180 miles an hour. They know all that way before they yeah, got backwards here. and forwards. They wanna know how they interact with you. They like, I like to come to these things. I spend hours with them, just with customers. We take them all, we take our dealers, we take their best customers over to Italy. We have great pasta, good balsamic great Parmesan cheese, we take them to our track. They love that lifestyle. Yeah. And that's what There's a lot to be to said do. for being super rich, isn't there? No, there's a rich because you can afford to death. That's not a cheap trip. Right. right. So they like to marry those things. Oh, we have a, a very good customer that lives here in town that was here with us last night. And the first time that she went to go see her car being built, she goes, every year now I go back to that place in Italy because I just love the whole countryside. So there's a lot to be said for that. And then we make all the arrangements right. for those people. So you have the features within your car, the exclusivity of the car itself, Absolutely. the features within the car that keep it new, keep it fresh, keep right. it exclusive, and then you have the lifestyle that goes around it that Absolutely. is the, know, the, the third leg that of that do. stool. Right. You know, it's, a, it's a great thing to, to do, but you know, it's a tough strategy to work. It, it you know, can go just as fast backwards as it does forward for anybody. You know? So we, uh, we thank the lucky stars that uh, it's all beginning with the product, and the products are pretty stunning. Absolutely. You know, they're timeless designs. So as I, as I said earlier in my speech, you look at any luxury product, that's a given today. Whether it's that Patek Philippe watch that I'm wearing, this watch is from 1961 it's a pretty from watch, my father, yeah. mm -hmm. and it looks exactly the same as a brand new one. It's timeless. Yeah. And you look how thin it was and how wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the kind of things you have to say to yourself when you're, when you're doing a new company like this, because it's easy to fail. Yeah. It's well, a lot this, easier to fail than it is to absolutely. succeed. Absolutely. And when, especially when you're dealing with such a discriminating customer who has the wherewithal to right. go anywhere they want. You know, I think that my background, you know, having been with Rolls-Royce for a long time and doing the launch right from the start of the Phantom gives me a fairly good feeling for the kind of people. and. And that particular product is even more bespoke than what we do, and much more limited. And you know, when you, you see the people and you interact with them, most, many of them are the same customers we have here. Many of them are the same customers, whether it's Bentley or it's Ferrari. If you look in their garages, it's very typical. Our least customer probably has four or five cars, three, four homes. Sure. He's got to have a car at all of them. At all of those homes, of course. So when you look at it, it's not like, I don't find any of the super wealthy, as I call them, to be extravagant, they just have a lifestyle that allows them to do this. Yeah, yeah. And and they're very tough people to deal with. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't spend their money in a uh, flamboyant way. Usually. Well, it's interesting. I you know I've known some super rich. I've worked for some super and rich, and they're not frivolous. Know. They're right. not frivolous. They're they the nicest want value people. Normally, right. most of the people that I deal with are the nicest, humble people. They're the least people you would expect in a lot of times. Right. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a good way to sum it up. Jim Selva, thanks so much for being with us. And thank you for Kelly having me. Kelly Blue Book. Very good. Okay. And join us for more Kelly Blue Book coverage of the North American International Auto Show.